Hey, 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 welcome back. This is going to be all about hydrogen, uh, this particular video. So starting out, you have your tanks. This is for storing your hydrogen. This is an H2O2 generator. This generates oxygen and hydrogen. This is your engine. This burns hydrogen in order to create electricity. And then you have your thrusters for propulsion. And if you come over here to the tank, this is going to be um, for large grid, essentially. Uh, yeah, all right. So if you come in your terminal here, you can see that it has 15 million liters worth of storage. And your, your H2O2 generator has zero uh, hydrogen storage on it and it uses ice, which is what all the lakes are made of currently. It uses ice to make the hydrogen and oxygen. And then your engine actually has, uh, let's see, 100,000, I believe. Yeah, 100,000 liters worth of hydrogen storage in it. And another important feature of the engine to note is that the engine is always set to stockpile so you can never, ever pull the hydrogen out of an engine and move it to, say, a tank or another ship or run your thrusters off the engine. The hydrogen that is in this engine will only ever be used for this engine in its lifetime. So keep that in mind when you're building engines. And also, uh, the only way to turn that off is to turn off the engine itself. That's the only way to prevent it from pulling more hydrogen out of your out of your tanks. Next, uh, let's talk about liters. So a hydrogen engine pulls 500 liters a second. That's how much it burns and produces five megawatts. An H2O2 generator produces 500 liters a second and consumes uh, ice and uh, 500 kilowatts of electricity in order to produce uh, hydrogen. Also, something else that is very frustrating about starting out in space engineers is it's hard to judge uh, the ice to hydrogen conversion. So I went ahead and I loaded up a survival world and put this to the test. 1,000 kilograms of ice will produce 20,000 liters plus or minus 0.01% of hydrogen. Um, I'm not sure why this is the case, but I did multiple runs. I, I think maybe it has something to do with like skipping a time or a tick or something like that in the programming. It's hard to say for sure. I, I'm still learning this too, you know? And then for measurements, you have liters, then you have hectoliters, which are 100 uh, liters, and then you have uh, cubic meters for the big hydrogen thrusters. And if you come in a terminal here, even though these aren't hooked up yet, we can see how much it's going to pull. So one uh, metric cubic meter will uh, consume is uh, excuse me one metric cubed meter is a thousand liters so this thruster at full thrust will uh, burn uh, 4,800 liters a second alternatively your small hydrogen thrusters here we are this will burn 803 liters a second if it's at like full max thrust and then it'll it'll produce uh, 110,000 kilograms worth of lift what I do when it's uh, mega newtons I multiply this number by a hundred thousand and then when it's mega or yeah then when it's kilonewtons let's say it's like this I multiply it by a hundred so this would lift 11,900 kilograms 
that's like the quickest way to do it. Basically, it's ten newtons for every um, for every kilogram you want to lift, and that's just enough force to uh, move it upwards in uh, one one gravity. On moons, uh, keep in mind that your thrusters are four times more powerful lifting on a moon or Europa or Titan than they are on Earth. Or especially if you're like on Pertam or Alien Planet where the gravity is actually um, stronger and more drastic than on moons or regular Earth-like. Next, we need to talk about plumbing. So... Another issue is, let's say I have a tank here. And let's make this a small grid for this particular issue. And tanks actually require a bare minimum amount of power in order to initially, like, function. For example, even, um, even conveyor tubes need power in order to move objects through them. With the exception of things like this, where, like, let's say the entire grid was dead, just hypothetically, you could still come on and, or come over here and turn on this engine, and you could, you could uh, essentially get power back as long as there's hydrogen in the tank. So, anyways, on to what I was uh, getting to. Uh, so, here is your, your small thruster for the small grid. This will work and be powered. However, if you use the large grid version, excuse me, let's uh, hit that again. Use the control mouse wheel to bring this in. You'll notice it has a large port on the back. This large port can only uh, receive hydrogen from a large port. So you can't power this thruster with it just being hooked up like so. And even, uh, even if it's centered, it just won't do anything. So use small ports for small ports. And use big ports for big ports. And I don't think I can knock this over. Let's see. Nope. Anyways, I think we get the picture, though. Also, your tank cannot um, transfer power. Or, excuse me. Your tank cannot transfer hydrogen to another tank or to a thruster if the, if the grid has zero power. So um, keep this in mind as well. So this uses like one kilowatt. And even though your hydrogen thrusters, they say that they don't require power, uh, they require power as well in order to uh, be turned on. So you can't just place a tank in a, in a thruster and have power. Also, all tanks spawn with no, or excuse me, spawn. When you first build your tank, it won't have any hydrogen in it. You'll have to hook up a, first of all, a power source. Second, a H2O2 generator. And then you can start filling up your tank. And then you can utilize the power in whichever way you want. It's also important to note that this is creative. So engines magically never run out of hydrogen in creative and H2O2 generators never run out of ice, and tanks spawn with half uh, full. So that's something else to keep in mind. Also in creative, um, hydrogen generators put out like 10 times as much as they do in survival. So that's something else to keep in mind. So that's basically it for the video. Uh, appreciate you for watching, and I hope you'll consider subscribing and leave a like or a comment or a question or anything else that you would like me to do or see next and uh thanks